Hey y'all. So, as a nonprofit horse rescue, you never really know what to expect out of your day until the events of that day actually start unfolding, which is pretty much what happened yesterday. Um, September 27th, 2021, I uh, received a message at about five that morning about a horse that was supposedly abandoned in a barn. And that's how the story starts. I got up that morning and seeing that I had messages from different people about a horse, um, before I really started my morning, I went ahead and went out and did everything I needed to do with everybody before I started answering all my emails and text messages. That's whenever I seen the message about a horse that was apparently abandoned in a barn. So I wasn't really planning on doing too much that day. Uh, that day marked four years since my grandfather had died. And of course, there had been other stuff going on personally, so I was gonna take the day off. But I had started receiving multiple messages then about this horse. Um, I told them to contact local law enforcement and to speak with the owners. All I had gotten was kind of a dark video and I couldn't really see what was going on with the horse that much. So once the owners said that they were going to surrender the horse to our rescue, we loaded up and headed out that way. It was going to be about an hour drive for us to get there. Again, didn't really know what kind of condition the horse was in. Um, Law enforcement gave me a little bit of detail, but not a whole lot. So I was not aware of too much of the situation until I actually got there. When they had said that he had been abandoned in a barn, I wasn't exactly expecting this. The owners were still feeding him uh, straight off alpha, but he had been locked in this stall for years, as you can tell from the buildup, and he had not left that stall for at least 10 years. This was the video that was sent to me, and then this is what I was greeted with. I can say I personally have never seen hoof growth quite this bad. This horse has obviously spent a majority of his life in that stall without receiving hardly any hoof care. Again, the owners had been feeding him, but they never gave him the proper care you should give a horse. Once I got a full look at the severity of the case, I contacted our vets immediately and told them that we were en route with a very bad neglect case. Our next goal was getting him on the trailer because again, this horse had not walked out of the stall in years, so it was very painful for him. After we were fully aware of just how severe this poor horse's condition was after being locked in a stall for many, many years, we knew our next goal was to get him seen by our vets as soon as possible. So, we got him loaded in the trailer and started to make our way to our team of vets who were all very anxious to meet him. We didn't really know what to expect out of his vet visit. We knew he had absolutely horrible feet and along with terrible body condition. We just knew that he needed help. So we were going to help him however we could. His first steps off of the trailer really just made all of us cringe because we knew how much pain he had to be in. Our vets quickly got to work, looking him over, checking his heart and lungs, and then our next goal was getting him inside the building. All of the vets were absolutely amazing to him. There were many good boys, I'm proud of you, and you're so strong going through the air. They all quickly got to work. We first did a blood panel just to get a good idea. We checked the circulation to see if he had a good pulse still going down to his hooves. I could just see in his eyes that he wasn't ready to give up, so we just continued to work more and more. He had a wound on his back that they started working with instantly. He was very happy to get water. Every time he turned around, he had someone there wanting to give him loves or treats for that matter. The most crucial part were the x-rays. We were ready to see a lot of rotation, but he surprised us with hardly no rotation at all. 
Everyone was completely baffled by this. Our next task was getting him cleaned up and settled in to hopefully get him ready for the next few days ahead of him. While our vets went over his x-rays and started getting a plan together, we decided it was a good time for him to have one of his first of many baths. He had been given a pain medication at this time, so he was kind of loopy, but he was definitely enjoying it. All of this combined had been a very stressful day for him, so I'm sure he was getting to enjoy some much needed love and TLC while he could before we went back to working on him medically. Finally, with a good idea of what we'd be working with, we began cutting off the first layer of overgrown hoof. And I can promise you that this does not hurt him. This is basically the equivalent of you clipping your fingernail off. One of the main reasons we waited until x-rays were done before trimming his hooves was because in cases like this, the horse could suffer from severe rotation of the bones in their hooves or their quick, like what dogs have in their nails, could possibly grow out more than usual and if cut deeply could cause pain and lameness on that hoof. This sore you see was caused from his hoof rubbing his leg for so long. Close to 10 pounds of excess hoof was removed before we all finally agreed that he had had enough for one day and needed time to relax and decompress. So he didn't have to do any excess walking, we loaded him back onto the trailer to pull him around to his back quarantine stall where he would stay for the next few days at the vet clinic. It was agreed by everyone over his case that he needed a few days to get his strength back and then we would put him under complete anesthesia before removing the rest of the excess hoof. He would stay with our vets receiving round the clock care for the next few days and of course having daily pain medication to help with any discomfort. Sadly, these kind of cases are not the kind of cases we can rush and have everything completed within one day. The care he was now receiving is more than what he has had in many years. We set the date for his procedure and then allowed him to rest for the days leading up. He took full advantage of his round-the-clock five-star care he was receiving, as you can see here as he enjoyed his fan and all the scratches he could possibly receive. It was wonderful for us to be able to see life back in this beautiful horse's eyes. And he was finally able to rest for once, knowing that he was in a safe place and being taken care of. After Thaddeus had been home for a few days, he got to meet one of our amazing adopters who actually came and volunteered her time to give him a much needed haircut. Since he was locked in that stall for so long and the stall was never cleaned out, he had a lot of mats in his hair from the mud and feces that he would have to lay in regularly. So our handsome boy got a new haircut and he looks like a completely new horse. After his much needed haircut appointment, he was really excited to be able to lay down and actually enjoy himself. He does come out of his stall for a few hours out of the day to get some exercise, have some wound cleaning done on his back, and to soak his hoof in this wonderful hoof soaking boot that a Michelle Miller donated in to us. He loves watching other horses. On the day of his procedure, we went ahead and cut more of the excess hoof off before putting him under anesthesia. We had an amazing team of vets and a wonderful farrier working on him the whole time. Once more the hoof was removed, it was time to go and put him under anesthesia to get the rest of the more complicated parts. One of the main reasons we decided to put him under anesthesia is because this was going to be a very long and drawn out process. This way, he wasn't having to stand for multiple hours supporting himself with only three legs while we worked on him. He did perfectly fine the whole time he was under and never had any issues. We did see that he was going to be sore as expected on the right front hoof, which was of course his worst hoof. He was also very loopy whenever he woke back up and very confused as to what happened. 
About an hour later, he was perfectly stable and ready to go. Once he was cleared to go home, the vets made sure to do a quick wrap with bandaging and tape so his hoof was easily supported for the trailer ride home. Once we pulled into our drive, you could tell that he was instantly curious as to what was going on around him. He was so excited to step off of the trailer and into his very first field he had been in in over 10 years. He instantly got to work on eating as much grass as he could fit in his mouth at a time. He was also very curious of absolutely anything I did with him. At one point, he stopped eating and just looked at me as if to say, so this is all mine? as he stared back out into all the open fields around him. He stayed like this for a while, almost like he was in shock of all the open fields around him. Eventually, though, he did go back to eating. He will continue to stay on stall rest for the next few days and having his hoof wrapped daily until any tenderness is gone, at which point he will be allowed to go into our smaller rehab field. He is a very sweet boy and I can't wait to see him thrive. It's taking me all day to record this. Because every time I start recording it, I start crying. Around roughly 3.30 p.m. yesterday evening, Daddy has sadly passed away. Thaddeus had given us his absolute all. He fought so hard for himself and for us. Thaddeus was in his field grazing. He had laid down like he always does, but after he did not try to get up, 45 minutes later, I realized something wasn't right. So we immediately started calling vets to get someone out there to check on him. Almost all vets were out on emergency calls at the time, so while we waited for one to call us back, we continued to try to get him up. Sadly, with no luck, he was still very much so alert and eating and drinking. We hoped if we could ever get him on his feet, he would be good. One of our main vets made it out in record timing. All of his vitals were good. Heart and lungs were all stable. His temperature was a little elevated, but that was expected from us trying to get him to stand. She was quickly on the phone with his main vets talking about our options. They told us the best thing we could do was get him loaded and get him up to the clinic where they could put him into a sling. We weren't able to get the equine ambulance to our rescue until the next morning. So for the night, I did stay out in the field with him and continued to care for him. That morning, the equine ambulance did arrive. This allowed us to load him without making him stand or causing stress. We were able to put him onto a stretcher and then used a winch to be able to pull him into the trailer with ease. We made it to the hospital in record timing where a whole team of vets was waiting for his arrival. They immediately started working on him, giving him many fluids and hypertonic saline to get him stabilized enough to move him into the sling that was waiting on him. We then had to move him from the ambulance while he was still on the stretcher. There were over 10 people helping transport him from the back of the ambulance trailer to the ICU stall. Sadly, as soon as we made it to the stall, Thaddeus' heart stopped. Many rescue attempts were performed by the vets to restart his heart, but the hard decision was made to let him go and finally be at peace. Once our vets were able to do a closer inspection of his teeth, we found that the age guess was off. Thaddeus was actually into his 30s. Thaddeus passed away very comfortable and in no pain whatsoever. He was surrounded by people that loved and cared for him deeply. He was able to know that he was loved and cared for. He got to spend his last few weeks comfortable in open fields and receiving all the care we could give him. I'm so sorry. We did everything we could to give him a life that he deserved, and we gave him all the care that we possibly could give him. He knew that he was loved all the way up until the very last moment he was here. I'm so sorry. He did not pass away alone. 
in pain or locked away in a filthy stall he had been stuck in for over 10 years. He knew he was finally safe and was comfortable enough to know that he could go whenever he was ready and he didn't have to fight anymore. We are a rescue that takes on the cases that we know could end badly, but we do it because we want them to be loved and we want to give them every single chance we could possibly offer. Thaddeus will never be forgotten here. We will continue to rescue horses like him in his honor. He will be forever missed and loved.